Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. Uh, some of you requested uh, testing of vintage uh, uh, audio products. I have such a thing, although it's a twist on it. And uh, it's a twist on a Dynaudio ST70 tube amplifier that's been out, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years or more. And, uh, but it's a new take on it by a fellow by the name of Bob Latino. Uh, I see him at every audio show sitting in the corner soldering these boards <laughs> as a fixture always in the big, in the major hall. And uh, basically this is a modified design with a bunch of tweaks over the uh, original uh, ST70, which I've also reviewed if you're interested in that and you can look on Audio Science Review. But basically you get this uh, uh, board over here that's the newer design. It's got this nice uh, multi-turn, uh, oops, let me go down here, multi-turn uh, pots in here for setting bias. Um, and uh, let me take it to his website. These are sold as a kit that you put together. Uh, doesn't seem that complicated to do, although probably got a fair number of parts in here on, on the PC board you gotta do. But past that, looks like just simple uh, wiring over here. Um, he offers a bunch of tweaks, most of which are, are in this unit. Uh, one of the tweaks is this, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I guess you can't see it. But there are a couple of switches over here that you can uh, switch from pentode operation to triode. Uh, on this thing, the uh, terminals are uh, being replaced with uh, modern terminals. Uh, instead of having 4, 8, and 16, it only has 4 and 8 uh, ohm taps uh, that they've brought out. Um, let's see, it's a quite a heavy dis uh, machine. Oops. Sorry, almost knocked over a power cable. <laughs> Quite a heavy uh, machine with the three transformers in the back and uh, back breaking to move it. Um, excuse me, but very shiny, nice uh, cabinet, uh, stainless steel, polished stainless steel. That's uh, quite nice. And um, as far as the tubes, this was, uh, uh, I think this somebody built this and then another person bought it and the member that gave it to me bought it from him and I picked it up in between the two. Uh, the output tubes are EL34s um, and the Prima Luna 12AU7s are the preamps. And um, uh, let's see, a couple of things were broken in this one, but I don't think it impacts its performance. The uh, uh, This one speaker plug over here is loose and, and the RCA connector on the left channel was loose. But unless you really, really twisted the cable, uh, it worked fine. I couldn't detect any problems. Um, once I put the tubes in there, the bias was way off. And of course, I didn't put the tubes in any the order that there was no order on them, so I just plugged them in. And uh, despite what he says, as far as uh, setting the bias to 1.56 volts, this is, as I said, it's a newer design. And uh, for these uh, tubes, EL34s, the, uh, Bob recommends a 0.4 volt uh, bias. So. I let the unit warm up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and set the bias incrementally, went back and forth, cycled a few times on the left, cycled a few times on the right, and then went back to left, went back to right. There's a lot of interdependency there. Um, but once the thing was on 15, 20, 30 minutes, it didn't seem to drift much uh, on this thing. I also tested at a higher bias. There were some people arguing with Bob that um, at least the original, <coughs> excuse me, enjoyed uh, better performance at higher bias. So I tested that also, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, let's see, anything else? No. Uh, after I set the bias, I uh, ran my standard warm-up test. By then, of course, the amp was pretty warm. So good news is that it's very stable once it's warm uh, on this thing. So going to our usual dashboard of one kilohertz uh, uh, tone uh, that I adjust to be at five watts, we see that the gain is uh, about 0.3 dB different between the two channels. So you got a little bit of a channel matching issue. And um, uh, that aside, uh, you know, it's typical of tube amps. And unfortunately, the performance is actually worse than the uh, original ST's. Uh, 70 uh, in that's 10 dB higher distortion is in the third harmonic, not the sort of classic, you know, second harmonic people think is good. This is a push pull design, so um, it, it doesn't have that anyway, the second harmonic uh, bias. So, um, and then we have tons of power supply uh, uh, spear area, and um, you know, I try to 
play with the ground, it makes absolutely no difference. So this is all bleeding from mains and power supply into the uh, amplifier and coming out. Um, on this, I did adjust the uh, bias to 0.45 volts on, on one channel, and uh, I've got 2 dB better sign at, and uh, the channel matching actually got better. The gain improved a little bit. I don't know what the longevity issue is with having it to be, um, um, you know, run at higher bias and warmer. I didn't try to diagnose that, but I figured I put the data out there for people who want to go tweak such things. Um, this owner bought this in the midst of the review of the uh, Carver Crimson 275, which was a very disappointing amplifier to test. It had this insanely high output power, despite having little transformers in there. And I measured it. And in almost all cases, this version of ST70 outperforms it. Um, so compared to, uh, you know, the Carver is much better buy. Uh, convert, compared to the original ST70, I think the vintage one did better in this regard. It has a sign at a 63, and we're only 54 over here, so about 9 dB higher. And that's because this distortion was 9 dB lower on this thing. Um, as I mentioned, I, I, it has a pentode and triode mode. Um, I went ahead and switched to think the triode mode, and uh, the gain went down. So be careful when you do an A-B test. The volume will be lower unless you compensate for it. So you can't do a proper A-B test by just flipping the switch. The volume will change. And in triode mode, distortion gets even worse. You're down. You know, you give up another 7 8 dB. Uh, I guess if you want a distortion factory, <laughs> the triad mode will be more of a distortion factory on this thing. I was uh, I like the fact that it's rather quiet for a tube amp. Uh, uh, we got 14 bits of dynamic range at the five watts playback, and at full volume, it's almost CD. You know, 15 bits of dynamic range, so not bad. And it beats the Carver by seven dB, uh, which is nice. Uh, frequency response was kind of strange. No matter which tap I used on the back and which load I put on it, this little uh, notch was there. I don't understand why one channel is filtering uh, something at 30 kilohertz and the other one is not. But uh, maybe there's a wiring issue in this or component issue. I don't know. I haven't looked at the design on this thing. But luckily, it's outside of the audible band. So at 20 kilohertz, where I have the cursor, the two are the same, sans the channel matching issue. So about a quarter dB uh, off. So your sound stage may be just a hair skewed one way or the other uh, on this thing. So wish that wasn't the case. But you know, as I mentioned, if you muck with the bias, you can get this thing to be closer. There shouldn't be a dependency on that, but there is. Um, I was impressed with the um, crosstalk measurement, and uh, usually, even though this line looks like it's halfway in between these, a lot of equipment, even modern ones, struggle to get to the halfway point. So I'd say slightly better than average, uh, you know, as far as getting in here. So channel separation is quite good. <clears throat> Multitone is always the bane of existence of these high distortion apps. A lot of people say, well, those are all one killer tones, and who plays that music has a lot more tones. Well, okay, this has 32 tones. <laughs> it just makes the situation far worse because every tone intermodulates with another one, you get this grass at the bottom. So any detail in your music that's below 60, 65 dB will get lost in sea of distortion and noise. So Basically, I have 10 to 12 bits of clarity. Everything after that is gone. So it's like taking CD and chopping off four to six bits from it and uh, and replacing with distortion <laughs> below that level. Uh, so people say it's good. I don't think it's good. <laughs> I'll talk about my listening test later on. Um, this uh, the distortion sets in very, very early on this. Uh, I think one of our tube designers speculated that this must have very low feedback. And that would explain why distortion rises so quickly. Basically, before you, I mean, a quarter of a watt, you know, you go from being noise bound to being distortion bound. And uh, letting it go to nuts and generate the maximum power we can before clipping over here, uh, it generates 39 watts. So, by tube standards, not bad. And it beats the carver by 10 watts. So, it definitely proves that the carver was under designed and over as far as what it can do. 
I run a standardized test where I measure power at a fixed distortion of 1%. So the analyzer will, will iterate and change the input uh, voltage until it can uh, get 1% distortion noise in the output, and then it just measures the power. Usually this number is bigger than what I where I put my cursor, but this amp clips at such high distortion that the usable power at 1% distortion is only nine watts. Anything over nine, nine or 10 watts, you actually beyond 1% distortion. Um, and the peak is the same problem here. It's a burst over here, we're feeding it, and it generates 30% more power, but you still only got 12, 13 watts. So uh, don't count on playing this, anything loud with this or inefficient speakers. Um, switching to uh, using the 8 ohm tap and measuring 8 ohm, uh, we got same power 40 watts uh, on this thing, which is uh, unusual compared to uh, solid state amps in that they usually get half the power uh, at 8 ohm that they do at, at 4 ohm. So here you get basically uh, similar kind of performance. So uh, um, post the text review that you see in here, which I posted last night, I listened to it. Um, and uh, similar experience I've had with other two uh, preamps, uh, two headphone amps, and uh, standalone amps. Uh, I found that the um, sound is kind of just loses that impact and clarity and the dynamics and the tightness that uh, digital has. It just becomes more muddy to, to my ears. And worst part of it is the bass. The bass just gets flabby and and just pop, 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 rather than a boom, boom, boom. So strong, clean, dynamic, uh, you know, bass punches just become so loose and, and uh, um, wrong to me. It just it sounds like you have some extra room modes that you don't normally have. And uh, to make sure that was happening, I did a quick A/B test. I played the. Uh, uh, VTHC 70 first, and then I switched to the uh, Purify based uh, uh, Audiophonics amp that I reviewed recently, and it's just night and day. Now, beyond that, it's just uh, no uh, amount of power. Uh, you can get fairly loud when I'm listening to my Infinity speakers over here at three, four, well, maybe five feet. So it got loud, but not very loud. And if you keep cranking the volume first, you get this sort of a compression sits in where it doesn't quite want to get loud enough. Then the bass notes get become distorted, and then you hear crackling. So now, obviously, if you have extra sensitive horn speakers or something, uh, you know, you'll get the louder volumes, but for everyday use, and these are tower speakers, so it's rather sensitive um, that I have in my lab. And uh, it just, you know, I, I can't figure out the appeal at all with the sound. Uh, at some point, uh, the engineer in me appreciate that it's something this simple generates that kind of sound and music. It's, you know, transistor products are, are just so much more complex uh, these days versus the simplicity of a handful of, uh, you know, active parts generate music. But that's all there is to it. Now, I used to really pound on, you know, performance like this, but I've learned that, you know, that people want to get a tube and look at it and everything. So I let them sort of fight it out amongst themselves on this front. And if that's the case, I'd say the original ST70 is, is uh, you know, better performing one. I think all these tweaks have been made, perhaps haven't enjoyed some kind of close feedback loop like the measurements I'm showing. Uh, I suspect this design can be improved, but you know nobody's gone and measured it like I did, and uh, you know as a result the performance product has drifted back. I'm sure some people say it sounds better, but as I explained, it's just all these distortion products to me is what makes the sound muddy. It's what removes the impact of of notes and and uh, uh, what's in your content, and you know because every time you you get one tone, you also get spray of harmonics that come after it, and so everything blends into becomes more homogenized. I did not hear anything euphonic. I didn't hear anything sounded better. I didn't hear more liquid mids or more analog anything, uh, you know. But you know that's me. Um, so my ears are a lot more tuned to hearing distortion and uh, and of course the side of test so maybe if I did blind this would be different but anyway this is not for me uh, but you have the data uh, it's better than a, a carver which costs a lot more money and it's really under designed and poorly designed even though it has the name carver on it it's really a mistaken product uh, it just uh, you know we've, we've got 
50,000 page thread if you want to go through it, but it's just the performance is not there and it's distortions higher. It's just there's nothing good about the carver other than it looks pretty in purple or whatever color that it was it. Um, the original ST70 that I tested looked very crusty and rusty, but uh, it had you know lower distortion, so you could argue if tube is good. Uh, you know, well, that one doesn't have as much distortion as this, so you can't say that this is same as the, you know, same characteristic, just because you have distortion doesn't mean you want to pile a lot more in there. So that's all I have for you. Hopefully you enjoy this variety of uh, reviews that you see from me. Uh, I probably do a vintage product once a month or a month and a half as members send them to me uh, on this thing. I know there are a lot of old timers that enjoy seeing these reviews and uh, brings them back, back memories and so forth. Okay. See you in a future video. Bye-bye.